RC from the Mountaintop Joiner Shop here. Back in 2019, I wrote an article for Furniture and Cabinet Making Magazine, issue 291, about drawer slips. And this video is basically a video adaptation of this article. Of all the ways to install a bottom in a drawer box, drawer slips often escape mention. But there are several advantages to their use that suggest they shouldn't be overlooked. For one, they increase the bearing surface the drawer slides on, which both smooths the drawer's action and slows long-term wear. The drawer slips are added after the drawer box is constructed, freeing up the maker to lay out dovetails wholly without concern for the placement of the drawer group. Furthermore, the maker can use thinner stock for the drawer sides, saving material, weight, and interior space, as well as lightening up the look of the drawer. The one disadvantage to drawer slips is that they are a bit of extra work, but I hope to show that they're not as labor intensive as it first appears, and can actually be quite enjoyable to make and install. So that's what I'm going to be doing in this video. I have some tiny drawers to make and I would like to put some drawer slips in them. So I'm gonna show you how it's done. But first, I have to dovetail some drawers.
right, so I have my drawers all dovetailed up. I got three of them here. And you can see, I'll, you know, I'll bring these up closer. You can see that the only concession I had to make for the sake of fitting a drawer bottom in here was to make the drawer back a little bit shorter than the other three sides. So when I put my drawer slips in here, they're gonna create a groove around the sides and the front of the drawer, just those three sides. And as far as the thickness of the drawer slip, basically I have it such that I can fit the drawer bottom just underneath the back of the drawer. So I'm gonna have a little bit of drawer slip underneath the drawer bottom. And of course I'm gonna need some above the drawer bottom as well. So the thickness of my drawer slips is going to be two thirds the thickness of my drawer bottoms. And I'm just going to have to notch the uh, drawer slip to fit underneath the drawer back, back here. So I found myself a, a piece of cherry here. You know, normally I would do my drawer slips in the same species of wood as the drawer sides, um, but these drawers are gonna be a little bit fancy pants. So I'm gonna have some uh, Amante Bark paper veneered drawer bottoms to go into here. And I want there to be a contrast between it and the maple drawer sides because the Amante Bark paper that I'm gonna be using is very light in color. It's very similar in color to the maple actually. So in putting a contrasting wood in as a drawer slip, it's going to frame in the drawer bottom nicely. It'll be a nice color contrast. So I found myself a cherry board over here. It's at least as long as this distance around this side and front of each drawer. So I should be able to get three rips off of this board that'll get me the drawer slips I need for all three of these drawers quite easily. And then I'll be able to run kind of a continuous grain. I know that I'm gonna have an even thickness moving from one section of the drawer slip to the next. So this is what I'm gonna use. And you can see that this board has a nice straight grain run out along the edge of it. If you're going to be cutting these drawer slips by hand, like I'm going to, then it's uh, pretty good to look for a board that has a nice even run out of the grain in this direction as possible so you don't deal with reversing grain when you're applying the grooves for the drawer slips. Of course, there will be ways to do this by machine as well via table saw and router tables and things like that. So as I go along, I'll try to mention what those alternatives are. But for the sake of this video and with the tooling that I have, I'm gonna be doing this by hand. So I mentioned that I want the thickness of my drawer slips to be about two thirds the thickness of my drawer bottoms. My drawer bottoms are right about five mil, almost six. Uh, so I want the stock that I'm going to be cutting my drawer slips from to be about 15, 16 mil in this case. Uh, this board is quite a bit thicker and it hasn't been milled yet at all either. So I'm going to flatten this board, run it through the thickness planer until I have it down to about 16 mil or so. And then I will show you how I plow the grooves for the drawer slips. All right, so I have milled this board down to about 15 and a half mil or so. And I cleaned up the edge and I used my joiner plane with the uh, edge guide on it because uh, you know normally I would just freehand that, but I'm gonna be doing several of these in a row. So I figured I may as well simplify things and run the edge guide. And that's one of the reasons I used a board that's so wide. It gives me room to kind of clamp it and to work on it with any kind of fence here. So, so I got this all squared up and the edge is treated. It's nice and straight. And now I need to decide what kind of plow plane blade to use. So I got my plow plane blades all laid out here. I have them in English and in metric, so I can kind of cover pretty much any situation. I have the material I'm gonna use for my drawer bottoms, which is just this basic plywood here, and I'm going to be veneering it in a Monte Bark paper. This is a different colored paper than I'm gonna be using, but it's the exact same stuff otherwise. So I got two layers of it, because I'm gonna be veneering the top and bottom of this plywood, because you know, plywood by itself is not all that pretty. And I want to see what the thickness of that is going to be. And I don't know if you can see that or not, but we're looking at about 5.4 mil. We'll just round off to five and a half, I think. We're pretty dang close. So I'm going to find the plow plane blade that is equal to or just a tiny bit wider than that. And that'll be what I use to plow the grooves. Well, it turns out that the blade that was already in my plow plane is the one that I'm going to end up using. So this one's about six mil. So that gives me about half mil leeway or so uh, for my drawer bottom. And I feel like the uh, Amante Bark paper that I have in the other color is actually a little thicker than this anyways. And of course there's gonna be some thickness added by the glue. So I think that'll work out really well. Now I need to position this such that the groove is where I want it, right? So the way I'm gonna do that is I know that I milled this a little bit fatter than 15 mil. 
And I want the bottom of my drawer slip to be a little bit thicker than the amount of meat I have on top of the drawer groove. So if this is gonna be the bottom, I'm gonna use this anchor T rule to measure over five, five mil, and 10 mil. I'm gonna flip that around, that should mean that this, yep. So I got about five and a half mil on the bottom there. And there's a couple reasons I do that. Uh, I have the wood be thicker on, underneath the groove than on top. One is if it ends up being that way, then you know there's just a little more, you know, wood there kind of supporting the bottom of the drawer. Also, when I install this, I'm going to be planing it flush with the drawer bottom, and so I might actually lose a little bit of material on the bottom here. And so to leave a little bit extra there isn't such a bad thing. But now I know where to position my blade. I'm just going to put it right between those pencil lines. Now there's a five mil there between those two lines. So I'm just kind of centering it on there because this is a six mil blade and I'll still end up with a little bit more material on the bottom than on the top. Let's plow groove. Now we typically start at the end, the far end of the board and work our way back with successive passes. So I'm actually creating a ramped groove as I go along, but eventually it'll stop cutting at this end and I'll be cutting less and less as I get to this end, and then I'll have a parallel groove with the edge all the way the full length. But the reason we do that is the first groove helps guide the second pass. The pass after that is supported by the first two passes and so on and so on. So, oh, I also have to set my depth. Let me do that. So let's figure this out here. Where am I at right now? That's about five mils. So that's about what I want, actually. I'm gonna be cutting this so that my groove only goes about halfway through the material. Uh, so I'm gonna have a drawer slip that's about a centimeter thick or so. So that, that'll be fine. And what about technique with the plow plane? What I'm doing here is putting a lot of pressure on the fence to keep it square. And I'm pushing with the heel of my hand on the back of the tote. I'm not gripping the tote hardly at all. I'm just pushing. Basically the only reason my fingers are wrapped around it is to lift it off and do the next pass. And that is the typical technique you use for a plow plane. Well I'm at I may as well talk about another technique for using a plow plane or really any kind of joinery plane is not to do too many dance steps while you're doing your work. So uh, if you have a little bit longer board, you, you want to do your planing action with as few steps as possible. So I'm going to get here behind the board. Just like that. So I don't want to be taking extra steps. And then coming back here and... Don't need to do that. This board is short enough that I can get in here and just take one step forward. And if this board was the full length of my bench, well, even then I want to do that as few steps as possible. So I'm just starting from way back here and doing the same motions. So something to think about when you're doing a lot of edge planing is not using unnecessary steps and wasting energy because you're the one who's supplying the power in this case. Keep thinking of new points to make. So another thing in terms of efficiency is to keep your shavings bucket right by where you're doing your planing. So when your plane gets full of shavings, you have a place to toss them into other than the floor. So when you're cleaning up your shop later, you don't have to spend as much time sweeping up. So you can see when I'm doing this, I don't even really have to look to hit the bucket. And even if I miss with a few shavings, not a big deal. All right, so I kept taking passes with my plow plane until it stopped cutting anymore. So I know that my groove is ready to go, but I don't want to rip this free yet because I want to do a few edge treatments to create a profile for my drawer slip before I knock it loose from here. So uh, what I'm going to do is put a little bit of a chamfer on the bottom edge of my drawer slip, and then I'm going to do a round over on the other side. So when you reach inside the drawer, you don't have a kind of sharp edge that you're hitting with your fingers or whatever you throw in the drawer. Um, another purpose that this serves is to help you keep track of which side the bottom and the top of the drawer slip are because if you'll recall, I cut this groove so it was offset 
just a little bit. And if I get them flipped the wrong way, the grooves aren't going to line up with each other. So uh, what I'm going to do first is just use regular block plane and do a chamfer on the bottom edge. And this is another reason why it's good to have a nice even run out of the wood grain uh, on the stock that you're working on. Uh, now, if you were doing this with a uh, router table, you might not have to worry as much. I wouldn't know. I haven't had one for a very long time. But um, yeah, so when you're using hand tools, using straight grained wood with an even run out is uh, very helpful for these operations. So I'm going to go ahead and do the chamfer first. I have a nice even 45. That sounds kind of loud. I run my finger along the edge there. It actually feels like I'm going against the grain there, getting a rough surface. So I'm going to flip it around and work it the other direction. Funny thing is about wood is that you'll think that you're going with the grain just by looking at the grain patterns, but you never really know until you take a pass if you're actually doing that or not. See, that's a little smoother. Go figure. A little bit more. So I might be removing some of this chamfer when I hand plane the bottom of the drawer slip flush. That ought to do it. Now I'm going to do the round over on the other side, and for that I'm using the Veritas cornering tools. Cornering tools. And these will do a round over and a profile from 1 16th up to a quarter inch. With these, it is especially important that the grain doesn't run in and out along the board because if it catches, there's no mouth here to speak of to prevent tear out from turning into a splintering out. So um, I'm going to do a light pass with the 1 16th first. See how the grain behaves as I move along. Uh, if it looks like I'm going the wrong way, then I'll flip the board again. No, no issues there so far. You can see I just run that cornering tool at about a 45 degree angle along the edge there. And I'll do it a second pass. In case I missed anything on the first pass. And now I'm going to flip it around and do the 1 8th. All right, that's all right. I think I want to go up to 3 sixteenths in this. For some reason, I just like the look of a 3 sixteenth round over as opposed to something, well, especially uh, uh, as opposed to a quarter inch. But this round over here doesn't seem like enough to me. I don't know. So let's do 3 sixteenths. So I always do extra passes. You change the angle a little bit. You catch different parts of the profile that you might have missed on previous passes. And the extra pass is because it rides along that round over. It actually kind of helps burnish the wood as you go. So there's my profile. On the bottom I have a little bit of a chamfer that may get smaller as I plane it flush with the bottom of the drawer. And then on top I have a little bit of a round over. So now I'm ready to rip this free and start cutting the pieces to fit into the drawers. Now I've set my marking gauge to about a centimeter so it's about double the depth of my groove. So that's how about how thick my Door slips are going to be, and I'm just going to take this over to the bandsaw and rip that free. Now, in days gone by, I would do this with a rip panel saw. Uh, now I do it with the bandsaw. If I had a table saw, I'd be doing it with that. Uh, by the way, if you hear a disturbing roaring sound in the background, that's because there is a windstorm outside my shop. It is pretty intense, so you might hear that once in a while, but show must go on. So let's rip this free, and then I'll rinse and repeat and make two more of them. So now I have enough stock to do the drawer slips for three drawers and I ripped them on the bandsaw just shy of my marking gauge line. So all I got to do now is flip them over against the planing stop and run joiner plane over them until I'm down to my marking gauge lines and then I have stock that's ready to be cut. Okay now I got my drawer slip ready and it's uh, ready to be sliced and diced. So I'm going to line this up with the inside of my drawer with the side that is the bottom sticking up and I'm going to leave a little bit sticking out the back here and I can cut that flush later 
but that gives me some leeway on the other side for cutting my miter. So I'm gonna put a little mark right where the drawer slip meets the front of the drawer there. And then I'm going to mark that with my combo square. This isn't really a critical measurement. Now, what I like to do when I am cutting my miters is actually to cut in that direction. Now, I'm cutting into the face of the drawer slip, so if the teeth of the saw kind of splinter out any fibers, I don't have to worry about trimming that away. So what I'm going to do is actually wrap this around the back side of this, like this, and move my pencil line to the other side. And then I have about where I can cut into the face of the drawer slip at my bench hook, like so. And I'm gonna cut just on the outside of that line and then trim that down to a nice clean miter over at my shooting board. So I'll grab my crosscut saw, get everything else out of the way, and have at it. Hopefully I don't hit the camera while I'm doing this. And it doesn't really have to even be that clean a cut if you're using a shooting board. Here we go. So I have that cut and then I'm just going to clean it up on my shooting board over here, which I'll show you in a moment. In the meantime, I'm going to get this ready to cut another miter on. It's like this. So I'm going to run the drawer slip with a continuous grain around the front and the other side of the drawer because why not? So here I am over here at my shooting board. This is the Veritas uh, shooting board fence. And it's an adjustable fence, so I'm gonna bring this to its 45 degree detent, tighten that down, move the fence over. Now, if you're curious about the shooting board and the shooting board fence, I did a whole video about that, talking about what my favorite or my most indispensable hand plane in my shop is. So now I can just drop this in here and clean it up real nice. And I'm already getting a pretty nice miter, but I want to make that pencil line disappear. So I don't have to deal with trying to clean that up later. And then I'm going to check this with my combo square. Looking pretty good. See if it's square this way too. Yeah. And I think it's calibrated, it stays calibrated. I'm all for it. So that's one side of my drawer slip. All right, now my first piece of drawer slip is basically ready to go, or almost ready to go. When I tuck it in here to the front edge of the drawer, you'll see that sticks out the back the way I wanted it to. I'm gonna trim that flush later. But it doesn't fit all the way down in there because of the back. It needs to be notched to fit over the drawer back. So what I'm gonna do is hold this in place with the miter tucked in up front, nice and tight come around front and put a little knife mark right there to mark where I'm going to notch the drawer slip. So there's my little knife mark right there. I can deepen that and run around the edge. What I need to do is cut off the top of the drawer slip at the back here without removing any of this groove. So I need to remove right up to that groove right there. So I'm gonna mark this a little bit deeper with square like this. Now I'm going to mark a little bit of this back side like that. And then I need to get a marking gauge for this right here. Let me grab that real quick. I'm going to set the marking gauge so it's right about on the edge of that groove right there. This is one of those micro adjustable marking gauges that are handy for this kind of thing. So I got my marking gauge set so that it lines up with the top of the groove just like that. So I'm going to mark this along the back just like so. And then I need to notch that out. One thing I find that helps me uh, make this kind of cut more uh, accurately is to notch out on one side of the knife line where I want my kerf to be. It gives me a little notch that I can rest my saw in when I start the cut, and that ensures that my cut starts right on that knife line. And now I'm ready to make that cut, so I'm just going to drop my saw right into that little notch that I created by knifing out next to the knife line. And you can see that saw rests right on it. And you can see that I stopped 
just as the teeth of the saw started to break into the groove there. So I know that I'm deep enough to notch this the rest of the way out. So I just need to cut that part. Now when I get to the part where I want to cut out this notch along the grain, the way I like to do this is to actually chisel out or split the uh, wood away, kind of like the way you would uh, chisel away the uh, cheeks of a tenon, a la Paul Sellers, perhaps you've heard of him. You'll notice that the grain actually runs in to the knife line a little bit. So I do have to be careful as I approach that, but I like to take a little bit of a chunk off just to see how badly that run out how badly that run out goes into the line and here it doesn't seem to be acting that way at all so the reason I do it this way as opposed to trying to saw along that line with my dovetail saw is once the teeth of the saw get to where they meet up with the top of this groove that I plowed earlier, there's no resistance on one side of the saw blade and the saw blade is going to have a tendency to want to go into the groove. And of course I need enough groove there that when I tuck it underneath the end of my drawer, under the drawer back, that there's enough room for my drawer bottom to fit in there. So I do need to try to stay as close to this knife line as absolutely possible. So I'm just going to very carefully sneak up on that. And at risk of putting my forearm right into the frame here, um, I'm standing right in front of this so I can sight down the line and I can see if I'm vertical or not and following this. And I'm just going to break off that back part. Now I'm going to try to knife directly down the line. So I'm going to stick my chisel right into the marking gauge line at the top. Oh, I'm going to have to do it this way, I think. And I have to turn in a little bit. There you have it. So now I'm notched out to fit underneath the back side of my drawer. So here I have my drawer slip basically ready to go. I have a miter cut at the front, my chamfers at the bottom, I have it notched at the back, and it should fit into the drawer just like so. I'm just about ready to glue it into place. What I like to do first is actually to glue this second piece in. So I'm gonna go ahead and miter that and trim it until the miters just tuck into these corners and then stick this guy in, because that has a tendency to push it forward just a smidgen, and that'll tighten up this spot where I notched it out where it meets the back of the drawer there. And then when that's, once that's all glued in, I'll be able to trim off the excess off the back, and it'll be nice and clean back there. All right, so I cut out the front piece of drawer slip, and the way I did that was I took this little notch off of here. It's basically a continuation of the same piece of wood that I used to cut out the side here. So it's gonna run the grain continuous around it which isn't necessary at all, but it's just something I like to do. I trimmed it down on the shooting board until it just crammed into here. Now when I set this miter in for the side, you can see it tucks in a lot tighter at the back end here. So I can trim a little bit off of this miter until that back notch just fits into here nice and snug. And I have a nice tight fitting drawer slip all the way around using that technique. So. I'm going to go ahead and glue this front piece in, trim this one to fit, and even with the clamps here, it doesn't really preclude me from working on the other side. So I can keep right on going until I have the next side ready to go. So while I'm notching out the drawer slip for the other side of the drawer, uh, because I'm right-handed, I really have no way to cut this into the face of the drawer slip uh, when I notch out the back there to fit underneath the drawer back. So uh, what I did was take a marking gauge to that line and wrap it around the front. I could do that. There's a good chance having that knife line there will help keep the teeth of the saw from tearing out the grain right there on the far side of the cut. But I have a better idea. What I'm gonna do instead is use this little flush cut pull saw. So these teeth are actually gonna pull into the face of the drawer slip there. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut it with this little guy, this dainty little thing. There you have it. That worked okay. Not perfectly square. I'm not exactly well practiced with this thing as anything other than a flush cut, but it looks like it did the job pretty well. So I'm gonna go ahead and split that out, and then I'm gonna start gluing in my drawer slip parts. All right, let's start gluing some parts in. So I got my high glue all warmed up. I have a YouTube short about how to, uh, a really good way to warm up your high glue. It's like that. Don't need a ton of it. 
I really don't want all that much glue squeeze out on this, especially on the top side where the bead is going to go, which will be that side. Um, so I'm just going to put about yay much glue on there and drop it in place. Make sure it's nice and flush to the bottom of the drawer. I'm squeezing more at the top here where that round over is to kind of direct all of the glue squeeze out to the bottom where I'm going to be kind of trimming this flush anyways. I'm not a big fan of tons of glue squeeze out. Um, you'll see a lot of, you know, YouTube and Instagram, just social media influencer types, you know, like myself, doing glue ups where they have just insane amounts of glue in their glue joints to where it just squeezes out. It's like a deluge of spooge not seen since the adult film industry. Like, it's just a ridiculous amount of glue, and it's not necessary. You really only need enough glue for where the two pieces of wood meet up. And even then, even if I starved this of glue a little bit, you'd be surprised how strong that joint is. And all I have to do is hold this tiny little drawer bottom in and whatever's gonna fit in the drawer. Um, and of course, it's gonna be supported by the sides as well. So you really don't need that much glue. Even this is a bit much, honestly. But there you have it. So I'm gonna finish clamping this in place and then I'm gonna put in the sides. So that's what it looks like all glued up. I did that front piece first and then put in the sides. I trimmed the miter until the notch in the back would fit into the back of the drawer. Uh, plus a little bit of finagling just to make sure these miters came up tight. You can see that there's a little bit sticking out the back of the drawer. I'm gonna flush cut that off a little bit later. You'll also notice, oh, I gotta get it in the light there. You can see that the bottom of the drawer slip is a little bit proud of the bottom of the drawer. That is not a big deal to me. I can, I'm gonna trim this flush anyways. It will make it such that the part supporting the drawer of the drawer slip will get planed away a little bit. I can live with that. The important thing to me is that the notch doesn't get closed up by fitting down over the back of the drawer too much because that means I won't be able to fit my drawer bottom in. I'd much rather have a drawer bottom than drawer slips that fit flush to the bottom of the drawer when I can just trim them flush anyways. So I'm gonna let this sit overnight. I'm gonna let the glue set and then I'm gonna trim these little projections flush on the back and then I'm gonna make my drawer bottom and then I'll have an assembled drawer that is ready for finish. All right, so we're getting pretty close to wrapping up the drawer slip portion of festivities here. Uh, I let this sit overnight. The uh, glue is nice and set. So now I just need to trim off the back end here. Looks like that just fits the full width of the drawer in my vice chop, which is pretty nice. And I just have a flush cut pull saw, Japanese pull saw. There we go. Now, I purposely didn't try to clean up the dovetails or the drawer sides until after I've gotten these done because I'm going to plane all this flush and I also need to plane the bottom of the drawer slips flush with the bottom of the drawer itself, then go ahead and fit it to its drawer opening. So all I need to do now is plane the bottoms. For this operation, I have my Veritas planing stop set up on the bench. I find those super handy for all kinds of work. So if you're not afraid to put bench dog holes in your workbench, you can really get a lot of use out of these planing stops. You can see mine have plenty of battle scars to illustrate their usefulness. And then as I trim these down, I'm actually using my smoothing plane. So when I get down to the flush, it's going to leave a nice smooth surface that barely needs any sanding, if any, to be a nice bearing surface or for the drawer to run on. So I'm going to finish this up and we'll pick up where we left off. All right, so I got these trimmed to the back now, trimmed to the bottom, and now I'm just kind of cleaning up all the edges and I'm starting to clean up the drawer sides until they fit nicely into their drawer pockets. You can see I have some thick stock here clamped to the bench that helps support the drawer when I'm plating it. So I set that in there like that, clamp it in place. Then I have a spot from which I can safely plane the sides of the drawer to help clean up the dovetails and get the drawer ready to accept this bottom and get some finish on it. All I want to do now is to take that hard edge off, kind of like the upturn at the tip of a ski or something. So when it slides into his drawer pocket, there's no hard edge there that's going to want to catch on anything. Got it slide well. It's not even waxed yet, so when it's all said and done, it's going to work real nice. 
All right, so I got my drawer bottom all trimmed to fit and I got it veneered with some Bamate bark paper. It has a nice variable texture and color to it. And then once I put some shellac on this, it'll toughen up a little bit too. And uh, I'm just gonna slide this in and see how it looks. Nice snug fit, just like that. So you can see how the contrasting cherry kind of frames in the Amante bark paper from the inside and the outside. It's a good look. And you can see how the drawer slips increase the bearing surface that the drawer runs on when it's sliding in and out of the case. It allows me to use thinner drawer sides, which have a much nicer look, especially in a smaller drawer like this one. It also helps stiffen up the sides. When you have thin stock like this, it tends to be a little flexy on the sides, but this helps with that. So there's a lot to be said for drawer slips. Not only do they have a kind of fashion aspect to them, but they also have a functional aspect to them. That is it. That's how I do drawer slips by hand, and of course you can do these by machine as well. And I find it a really nice way to kind of fancy up a drawer and add some functionality to it at the same time. So I hope you got something out of this video. I hope you find yourself trying this technique out yourself one of these days. It's a really nice way to add a little extra something something to a nice dovetail drawer like this. And speaking of dovetails, I mentioned earlier in the video that I would explain what these chunky dovetails are chunky like that for. And it's because I'm going to be cock beating the, the face of this drawer in the future. And I figured out my next video would be about that. But I am a little sick right now. I'm a little under the weather. I got sick during the filming of this video. And so I'm not sure when that's going to come out. But when I'm up to it, uh, that's what's next. And of course, I'll need to figure out how to say a word like cock beating in the title of my video without incurring the wrath of the powers that be and getting censored. So uh, watch for that, though. And in the meantime, I appreciate you watching. We'll catch you next time. Now, if you like what you saw here, please hit like and subscribe. It helped me out a lot. Also, hit the little bell icon if you want to be notified anytime I release a new video. And if you didn't like what you saw here, keep it to yourself, pal. Or watch one of my other videos. You might like one of those. Thank you for watching.